but their way of life very much in the spirit of Buddhist culture. So therefore, Buddhist culture, usually I describe culture of peace, culture of non-violence, culture of compassion. So that kind of way of life is not only Tibetan interest, but actually interest, I think, the whole world. The world, so much crisis, violence, and cheating, bully, uh, exploiting. As a result, huge gap, rich and poor, and then a lot of corruption, a uh, lot of hypocrisy. These are the source of problems we human beings facing all over the world. So, Tibetan Buddhist culture, culture of peace, culture of non-violence, <laughs> culture of honest, truthful. Of course, that does not mean every Tibetan are honest. <laughs> but overall, Tibetan, you see, our since childhood, our sort of habit, our sort of way of life is more compassionate, uh, peaceful. So therefore, uh, preservation of that kind of Buddhist culture, culture of peace, culture of compassion, I think really worthwhile to preserve. So millions of Chinese, particularly Chinese Buddhists, they already showing interest about Tibetan Buddhism and Buddhist culture. So, uh, you now here, please, whatever way, uh, try to help preservation of Buddhist culture. And uh, for that, again, the damage or degenerate Tibetan Buddhist culture, uh, not due to Tibetan themselves of not much interest or careless, but different sort of political situation. So therefore, firstly, we are carrying this stuff, mainly for preservation of our culture and environment and our basic right. So detail thing, our elected political leadership already mentioned. Well, so uh, now I'm old person retired <laughs> from <laughs> political responsibility. So it is not my so now duty. In any way, because of that kind of culture, we strictly following non-violent principle. So therefore, another way, small community, totally committed struggle according non-violent principle. That, in a way, showing example to the rest of the world. Difficult struggle can carry according non-violent principle. So, your support is actually give sort of, what's the day, encouragement to the rest of the world. Whenever they find, whenever they find difficulties, you see, immediately violence that's not the right way. Look, Tibetan, in spite of a lot of difficulties, strictly following non-violent principle. So please uh, keep in your mind when you showing concern about Tibet, please think of that. So that's all. Now, I think we will be here to try to put some. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I occasionally I'm mentioning that this is a carrying Tibetan flag. The Chinese officials they always see that is something uh, splitist sort of the activities. Mm. So I usually see telling that's uh, not true because 
1954-55, I stay in Peking about uh, around six months. Six months. During that period, I met number of occasions with Chairman Mao Zedong. Of course, other leaders also. At that time, so all leaders I met. Uh, then Chairman Mao several meeting. One occasion, Chairman Mao asked me, "Do you have?" Your own flag. Then I was hesitant. Then I told him, yes, we have. Then Chairman Mo told me, oh, it is very important to keep your flag beside national red flag. So therefore, I already got permission to keep this flag from Chairman Mo himself. <laughs>